bring it down to my level. We women are good at bringing things to their levels. <laughs> 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 Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening. Uh, Mr. Francis Ventura, he's now the coordinator of the Peshawar School for Peace. Dr. Honorable Dr. Marie Farooqi. Uh, Ms. Maria Kit Cruz. Uh, Michael DeVore. And Sam that Francis is talking about. I also see very distinguished young people here. Uh, we also have a representative of the Pakistan Medical Association here. And the region people are here. So it, it's a very vibrant group of people. I'm honored to be here amongst you. Uh, I was supposed to talk a little about myself, which I'm not very used to. Um, but yes, uh, to understand Pakistan, it's a transitional society. There are people who are progressive, who are moving forward, who are doing things, and there are people who still have a long way to go. And those who are successful have to look towards those who are not. Uh, this Peshawar Peace Project uh, is a very, very commendable initiative that Francis took. It is from his heart. And uh, I totally agree that interfaith harmony and women empowerment are very important issues. Uh, we all have to work together. Dr. Marine Faruqi has given a very interesting spectrum of global situation. And this is also a very propitious moment to talk about it because we recently celebrated the International Day of the Girl Child. And uh, there is also a serious issue being talked about at the UN Special Summit on Sustainable Development, where empowerment of women and education have been discussed. Gender equality is not only an end in itself, but is an essential means towards achieving sustainable and inclusive growth. Pakistan has maintained its commitment to achieve the Millennium Development Goals because, as you know, Millennium Development Goals include uh, the women empowerment and girl-child education. Uh, we are trying to do things at national level, at provincial level. Uh, we are establishing legal frameworks, institutional mechanisms, policy initiatives. Uh, we are following up on progress towards CEDAW, both at national and provincial levels. In legal frameworks, several legislations have been adopted to protect women, including uh, Child Marriage Restraint Act, which was actually adopted in 1929, but the parliament then reconsidered and further amended it, bringing it nearer to the ground realities. There are family codes, there are Protection of Women Act, uh, there is anti-rape law, there is anti-honor killing law. So you can see that the government is trying to do a lot, but there is still a lot to be done. And if, I mean, when people ask me, how did you become an artist and how did you start doing all these things? I was, in 1986, posted to United Nations that I was dealing with the third committee of the UN General Assembly, which, amongst other issues, discusses the women issues as well, social and humanitarian problems. And I realized the universality of the problems. The manifestation can be different. The intensity can be different depending on the level of education, the level of economic empowerment, and social and traditional norms. We need to work together. It's not about 
saying who is good, who is bad, how bad it is here, how bad it is there. The problems are everywhere. And there are beautiful people like yourselves who are keen to do things, to work together, to help the humanity. The other day, my friends, the young ones from Vijay, asked me, what can we do? And I told them, why don't you meet Francis? He's doing things on his own, and he has taken initiative. Um, everyone, each one of us, can do things, whether here or in Pakistan. The challenges in Pakistan are larger because we are a bigger population. We are now more than 180 million people. So obviously, 50% of 180 million is still a huge amount. It's uh, three times the population of Australia that you have to deal with. Uh, then the decade-long struggle against terrorism and extremism also continued to impose immense social and economic and humanitarian costs. These challenges are compounded by a number of adverse exogenous developments, especially the looming threat of climate change, the recent earthquakes, uh, aftermath of global economic, financial, and energy crisis, unabated fragility of global financial system, and the continued stagnation in developed country import demand as well as aid flows. Nevertheless, recent developments, both internal and external, provide us reason for optimism. Transformational impact of deepening of democratic culture and institutions in the country is very encouraging. Growing and engaged civil society has given greater voice to citizens in shaping their future direction of the country. And you can see that even what Francis is doing is part of the civil so society linking up with Pakistani civil society uh, workers to find a path that we can tread together to make this world a better place. We in Pakistan fully realize that gender equity and women's development hinges very strongly on protecting our girls so that they could grow into womanhood strong and independent to pursue economic growth and exercise their life choices freely. We have adopted the poverty reduction uh, strategy, which focuses, amongst other things, also on the empowerment of women and girls, because there is a growing, what they say, feminization of poverty, because the uh, majority of the population is involved in agriculture, and men often migrate to urban cities to have better earning while women are left behind to uh, deal with agriculture, but they don't have market access. So we have to provide them with that facility to be able to market their products and get the liquidity that they don't have otherwise. Uh, our focus is also on peace and security, governance, equitable economic growth, uh, inclusive social development, uh, access to health and education, uh, population growth, and engaging or expanding youth population in a positive economic activities. At national level, we have taken several steps. I would not like to bore you with it, but if you want, I can enumerate all of them, uh, which includes uh, establishment of Shaheed Benazir Bhutto, Human Rights Center for Women and Girls, uh, establishment of helpline for legal advice on human rights violations, including domestic violence. Uh, they have established a toll-free number on that. Uh, treaty implementation cells established at national as well as provincial levels. CEDO, I hope you know all what CEDO is, it's the uh, Committee on Elimination of Discrimination, Convention on Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. Implementation committees have been established at national as well as provincial levels. Uh, 
gender crime centers have been established in the Ministry of Interior to monitor and address cases of violence against women and girls and to foster the rule of law, women empowerment, and their access to justice. Women police stations and complaint centers have been established, staffed with lady officers, so that if there is a victim of uh, domestic crime, uh, domestic violence, a woman can reach out to a woman more comfortably than going to male police officers who might not take her that seriously. So we are taking all those steps. Uh, women are also given ownership of the land, which is their right by religion, but somehow men choose from religion what suits them and forget what doesn't. Um, there are also rules to have uh, protection at workplace uh, so that girls don't feel insecure in going out and working in public places. Uh, measures are also being taken to create more awareness about these issues. Uh, people like me who have been very fortunate that I had very dynamic parents who encouraged me to get educated, to do what I like, and having succeeded where I could, alhamdulillah, it's with their prayers and encouragement. But not all girls have those opportunities, and we have to help them out. So to help them out, we have to create this awareness, because sometimes, particularly in case of rape and domestic violence, uh, it, it's such a humiliation that often girls don't speak about it and they continue to suffer and the whole idea is to make them feel that it's not all right to suffer and it's not okay the religion does not allow that and no one else can prevent it uh, the men have to understand that that they cannot scare you into silence you have to speak out uh, there is also a need to create education of men that they also understand what the rights of their women are. Because uh, even as a woman, if you know your rights, but no one else <laughs> respects it, then what's the point? So it has to be the whole society that has to realize it. And that's what the government is working on, creating awareness both in men and women to understand that these are the rights that the religion has given and the country has given nobody can deprive them uh, while pakistan has made steady progress towards achieving its targets when it comes to mdgs the millennium development goals and the sustainable development goals we realize that so much more has to be done. The Peshawar School for Peace is a very good initiative and we deeply appreciate the noble thought behind it. They are also collaborating with some local NGOs involved in this mission as you can see here as well. Uh, there are certain NGOs, foreign NGOs that are working in collaboration with the government. There is PP, they say PPP which is public-private partnership and there are also government and private sector partnerships to achieve these objectives. But when you look at the global level, uh, we must realize that we share this planet and suffering in any part of the world affects all of us now. We cannot alienate ourselves. What happened in Paris has touched all of us. Uh, what happened in Peshawar uh, when, like Dr. Marine Farooqi spoke of, 140 children were massacred by these crazy people. Uh, under what justification? There is no justification for it. But uh, we need to work together. The whole world, we have to stand together, men and women. And if you have seen the Secretary General of United Nations, uh, rep report called Road to Dignity. It calls upon the developed countries also to step forward and 
to do their bit because now this planet is getting smaller and smaller and we are all affected by it. It is imperative that in the post-2015 development agenda, both developed and developing countries reinvigorate uh, global, <coughs> global commitment uh, for fulfilling their respective obligations in relation to their historic post-2015 development agenda. I thank you very much for receiving me here. Um, I think in the panel discussions, we will be having more direct conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you.